Predators Unleashed. Horror at the Zoo. The air hung heavy with the cloying sweetness of lilies and the metallic tang of something else. Something unpleasant. The zoo, usually bustling with the joyous shrieks of children and the excited chatter of families, was eerily silent. The only sounds were the rustle of leaves in the wind and the occasional mournful cry of a lonely monkey. It was a Sunday afternoon, but the place was deserted. I, a freelance journalist, had been assigned to write a piece on the zoo's recent renovations. My editor had emphasized the vibe of the place, the mysterious aura that had settled over it since the changes. It had all started with the new exhibit, a vast, almost menacing enclosure meant to mimic the African savanna. They called it the Wild Heart, and it held a pride of lions, a pack of hyenas, and a single magnificent rhinoceros. The exhibit itself was imposing, a sprawling landscape of dry earth, rocky outcroppings, and a shimmering watering hole. But something about it felt off. The animals, initially excited by the new space, seemed withdrawn, their movements sluggish, their eyes empty. The rhinos, normally stoic and wary, were curled in the corner, seemingly petrified. As I wandered through the desolate grounds, the unsettling feeling grew. The zoo's usual vibrant colors, the bright yellows of the macaws, the emerald green of the snakes, the crimson of the flamingos, now felt muted, washed out. Even the sunlight that streamed through the trees seemed to cast an unnatural pallor over everything. A heavy silence, punctuated only by the distant, mournful cry of a peacock, descended upon me. It felt like the zoo itself was holding its breath, waiting for something. A shiver ran down my spine, and I pulled my jacket tighter, although the day was warm. I reached the wild heart, its gates standing open, an invitation to enter. A strange energy pulled me towards it, like an unseen hand beckoning me closer. The silence here was even more profound, broken only by the rhythmic thumping of a lion's heart a sound that reverberated through my very bones. The air smelled strongly of iron now, a metallic scent overlaid with the unmistakable tang of death. As I peered through the fence, I saw the lions, huddled at the far end of the enclosure. They were a sight to behold, magnificent beasts, their tawny manes shining in the sun. But their eyes, usually blazing with wildness, were dull, glazed over with a strange, unsettling emptiness. Then I saw it, a single small object lying in the dust near the watering hole, a feather, long, white, and perfectly pristine. But it shouldn't be there. There were no birds in this exhibit, no animals with white feathers. It felt like a misplaced prop in a dark, disturbing play. Panic clawed at the edge of my mind. I turned away from the sight, feeling a surge of terror I couldn't explain. The zoo, the animals, the strange atmosphere. It was all wrong, out of place, as if the fabric of reality itself had been warped and twisted. I needed to get out. As I walked towards the exit, the feather in my mind, I felt a prickling on the back of my neck. It was as though unseen eyes were watching me, following my every move. The zoo, once a place of wonder and delight, had morphed into a nightmarish spectacle, a place of unimaginable horror. Fear, raw and primal, ripped through me. The wild heart may have been a new exhibit, but the terror it unleashed was as ancient as the earth itself. And I was just a witness, a stray observer caught in the crosshairs of something ancient and terrible. Thank you for diving into the spine-chilling mysteries with chills unveiled. If you've enjoyed the eerie tales and creepy narratives that send shivers down your spine, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more hair-raising content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an unveiling of the unknown. Join the community of thrill-seekers and let the darkness unfold. Subscribe now and let the nightmares continue.